All right. Yael, man, how's man, it going? Salute. What's up, Cam? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm good, man. Sure, Glad to man, be getting it sure. in with you. Yeah. Now, can you kind of like tell the people a little bit about you? You know, like where'd you grow up or what it was like for you? Yeah, uh, so I'm Yael. I'm from Compton, California, AKA Yompton. That's a, a community project based in Compton, California off of Wilmington and Alondra. Um, I'm an R&B slash rapper. Been doing music for a long time. Uh, man, I'm on one of the biggest records uh, featuring Mar and Wally the Sensei. So I'm the feature, Mar, and it's called Scanless. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know that record. It went viral in 2000 and it's been hitting ever since. So uh, yeah, man. Okay, and what was it like for you growing up in Compton? Oh man, it was <laughs> it was wild, man. Like I'm from the West, but I grew up on both sides. So I got a little bit of both of both sides of the spectrum. Like I went to uh I went to Whaley Middle School on the east side. I went to Dominguez High School on the east side, and I ended up going to Walton on the west side. I went to Compton High School where I graduated on the west side of Compton and um all my elementary. Mayo Elementary, Wilson Rouse, Longfellow, uh, shit, you name it. <laughs> I'm a Compton baby. It was crazy though, like, you know, from, you know, race wars to uh, Crips and Bloods beefing, like, it's just wild, man. It was wild. Now, you mentioned some of those schools. Yeah. You know, one thing I've heard about Compton is like, you know, one school will be a Crip school, the next school will be a blood school. Right. You know what I'm saying? Did you have to deal with any of that? Or, you know what I'm saying? What was that like? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, um, going to the going to the going to Dominguez, like I used to hear that it was a predominantly blood school. But when I finally ended up getting there, coming from middle school, it was it was bloods and crips. So, and it was crazy because a lot of the crips, it was predominantly crips, being that it was on the east side, but that you had, but then you had bloods over there too. Heavy, you know what I'm saying? You had your you had your mob power rules, you had your looters parks, you had a uh you had a couple of niggas from Watts, you know what I'm saying? But then you had your neighborhood Comptons, you had your South Side Comptons, you had your Atlantic Drives, you had a few Santanas. So like it was it was a predominantly Crip school, but you did have bloods and power rules to go there. You feel me? And what was that like, you know what I'm saying, being in school? And, and having to deal with that every day. It was, man, it was an experience, man. Like, I grew up in a household where I had both of my parents. You know what I'm saying? So they tried their best to keep me out of the street politics. But, you know, being that they worked and, you know, I was around nothing but women, I was trying to find myself. So when I ended up going to high school and then being predominantly a black school on top of Crips and Bloods, it was just... Man, it was just the atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? Being that, and I didn't have an older brother, so like, I was like, I was trying to find myself within the in the means of that also, you know what I'm saying? Like hanging out with the hard heads. Uh, my sister's trying to raise me, like my sister's trying to raise me, but then in the streets, I'm in the streets, so like it was crazy. You feel me? Okay. Now you mentioned uh, Park Village Crips. Yeah, on the west side. Yeah. At what age did you get jumped in and? How did all that come about? Um, I was about 12. I was 12 years old. I was going to Walton Middle School. Um, what, what, what catapulted me into wanting to become from the community was more so first I lived in my community and it was a family based community. Like everybody knew each other. You know, my dad, he's not, he's not a gang member, but he was very involved like with the homies in the community. You know what I'm saying? They respected him. So, after hearing that kind of reputation, I got a little older. I got 12 years old, eighth grade. I'm going to Walter Middle School. Um, again, I didn't have a big brother, so I was just really trying to find myself amongst this. Um, first day I go, first day I go into the campus, I get banged on by a dude by named D-Lo. He banged on me. He was from Park Village. And I was just like, damn, like, damn, that's my first introduction to middle school over here. And then from there, it was just hanging out with the Park Villages, hanging out with the Nutties. Uh, a few Acacia blocks, a few farm dogs. We all kind of like, kind of hung out with each other. But the Park Villages was the ones who more so embraced me. Like I was more embraced because 
like one of the dudes, his name was Chewy. He was like, bro, I, I remember you. I remember your dad growing up in the orange. I'm like, yeah, bro, you know, I used to live up over there and shit. He was like, yeah, man, like, come hang with us. I didn't have no lunch money one day. So bro was like, uh, hey, you want something to eat? You good? I'm like, yeah, but I ain't got no money. He was like, I got you. I'm gonna buy your lunch. And from that day, we just like, we formed a bond and we just like, we kept rocking. Rocking to this day, you know? Growing up in Compton, you know, Compton has a wild reputation. Yeah, man. Most definitely. What do you think was like one of the most wild things or things that you've been through that you could talk about? Ah, oh, man. One of the most wild events growing up in the city was when I experienced a neighbor being killed in front of me. Like we were, it was, it was a 4th of July and um, this was 2003 and um, they were popping fireworks outside and they always pop heavy fireworks. And um, this one particular night, two communities was feuding real heavy and one of the communities just slid. They just came through and bust. And I'm like, damn, them dudes just came through. They, they doubled back. But this particular time when they doubled back, it was a kid outside. He, was, he had to be no older than like between three or five. And um, we was all in the living room watching TV. I decided to get up and go to the door because I'm seeing my neighbors, they popping big fireworks. And all I hear is like, pop, 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 pop. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? What they busting over there, man? What kind of fireworks is them? I go outside, people running and everything. Man, we walk up. There's a baby laying on the side of the car. I was like, damn. Like, it just, it just, it blew my mind away. Like, I'm like, fuck. Like, I tripped out. I was like, damn. And from that, I, I, I seen other situations to where homies was getting shot and one died and you know, I didn't see him die, but uh, I seen him actually earlier that day. His name is Ray Mar. we used to call him Wu. And um, he ended up getting killed and he had got shot up and then seeing my homeboy, one of my homeboys, he's in, he's in a, uh, he's locked up right now. Uh, he was shot up, stomach open, laying on the ground gasping for his life. And I'm like, it, those, those experiences, those like impacted me to become the person that I am today. Like. It just took me to a whole different mindset mentally. You know what I'm saying? Like just experiencing that. I want to go back to that kid, man. Yeah. That's such a horrible situation. Yeah, man. Very horrible, man. It was sad, man. It was it was so sad, man. Man, how, how did that affect? How old were you and how did that affect you, man? Seeing man, I was, uh, like I think I was uh, 17, getting ready to graduate from high school. Yeah. I was 17, getting ready to graduate from high school, man. Kid was so cool, man. He was always cool, always. He used to, he used to treat us, he used to treat us little power electric cars like lowriders, because he was real big into lowriders. You know what I'm saying? His name was Denzel. Yeah, I remember yeah. his name, Denzel. Yeah, rest in peace to that kid, man. It was crazy. All right, now moving to you know through Compton, you know, like I like I touched on, you know, it has a rough reputation, man. You know. Yeah. Uh, you're in and out of schools. You're going to a few different schools. Yeah. You know, what? what is high school like generally for you? Man, high school, like, I was like, you know, I didn't really have problems, but I used to I used to get in fights because of where I was from. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm from. And, uh, you know, cats would be like, hey, where you from? And I'd be like, I'm, you know, I'm from Port Village Crib. They're like, oh, yeah? Like, yeah. And it was crazy because, like, some of the dudes I was cool with. But then they homies probably heard about stuff back in the day and it wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? Like going to Dominguez, like we used to have certain little issues with, with, uh, with communities, but we don't know more. But some of them cats, they used to be like, hey, you from, you from, uh, you from Park Village? I'm like, yeah. And I guess it was it, like, they didn't want to make it a big deal, but it was like, we got to say something to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, so a cat might say something to me. I end up catching the fade with a dude. You know what I'm saying? But after that, it had been cool. You know what I'm saying? Like it was cool after that. And then you had certain, certain, um, you had certain Hispanic hoods that didn't fuck with our community on the West side because you know, we, and we was notorious on my side of the town. You feel me? So like, I'd be squabbling cats for that too. You feel me? And I ended up getting kicked out of Dominguez for that. And I ended up going to Compton High because of fights. I used to get, 
I was getting kicked, I got kicked out for like multiple fights. So by going to Compton High, I had a few fights up there, but it wasn't, it wasn't on no game, like as far as like blood and crib type shit. It was more so shit like certain hoods that was around that we do that wasn't supposed to be up in there. We banking them up, making them get up out of there. You feel me? So like, but I didn't really have issues like that. I just was, I was just a little fighter. You feel me? That was it. Now going through high school and going through a few different high schools, do you eventually graduate or do you get kicked out? Uh, no, nah, I end up graduating. <laughs> My family thought I wasn't though. They was like, man, everybody was like, man, this dude is not finna graduate. And it was, it was, a, it was a trip because like, I ended up learning the pattern of the semesters, first, second, third, fourth semester, uh, um, quarter, should I say quarters. And I ended up passing the quarters that I was supposed to pass and fell in the quarters I was that I guess you would say like the it was just like it was like the uh, the progress report before you got the report card. So I seen the pattern and I was missing credit. So like I went to summer school enough to gain those extra credits and I ended up graduating on time. <laughs> I ended up graduating hey. on time, bro. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, man. And, and, you know, anybody that didn't make it out or like that didn't graduate, there's no shade to them. It's like some people don't even got a high school diploma and they doing great for themselves, you know? So. Now, now you graduate, you're out of high school. You know what I'm saying? This is when life gets, <laughs> it gets real. You know what I'm saying? You got to be more responsible. You know, what do you do with yourself? Do you get a job or do you stay, do you stay in the streets? Um, I was working. I was in the streets. Shit, I was doing basically, I was doing little things to keep money in my pocket so I can, um, you know, where I, where I live with my parents, I was living with my parents at the moment. So, you know, my parents were trying to teach me responsibility by, you know, if I live there, pay rent, you know, so it started me off like you got to pay 500 a month. So I was like, damn, okay, cool. So like I got a job. I started trapping a little bit. Trapping was working for me. The job was working for me. So I, you know, I kept both going until I seen like when I started like the job, the uh, the politics and the job started getting out of hand. So I was just like, man, I'm tired of working these jobs, bro. Like if it ain't one thing, it's another. And because I was a brother working in a in a certain uh, a certain um, what should, how can I say it? A certain category in a grocery store, like. It was predominantly Hispanics, you know, and some of them didn't like the fact that my work ethic was real good. Like I was moving up. I had only been working there for like seven, eight months. And the the, the produce manager was like, bro, you work good. I want to move you up. So like it was politics. People was hating on me then. And I like I kind of got irritated with it. So I was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to just I'm going to just, you know, thug it out in the streets. You feel me? Like if this is what I'm going to be getting every time I get a job, I don't even want to keep going through it. So I started hustling and shit. And um, I thought about it, I was like, man, I was being told by some of my older homies, like, man, if you hustle, you gotta have ways to make sure your money is good. So I ended up trying to get another job. It didn't really work out, but I ended up understanding like, you can't bring the streets into your job. So I had to really learn that. I was really, learn I was going through a lot of learning curves, like, cause I was so like hood washed, like in my brain, like just, Cripping and politicking and gang banging, like don't take nothing from nobody. And a manager might say some shit that I don't like or disagree with. I'm telling like, hey bro, don't like who the fuck you talking to? Like I I got fired from one of my jobs for beating up a customer at Superior Market. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like I beat up one of my managers at Superior in Compton. Like I used to work in Compton, right? So I end up beating up one of the managers in the produce for saying some. He said some way out shit to me, so I beat him up. And then after I beat him up. They didn't fire me because they seen that the dude was in the wrong. They seen him on camera. They seen him on camera doing some, you know, he was basically provoking and provoking and threatening me. So when they seen that and I fired on him and dropped him, they was like, okay, we see you didn't just get angry and hit him. He was provoking you. And uh, it went from that to me working to uh, another superior market in Long Beach off of Cherry. I worked there where a customer was drunk, came in there tripping, and I just two-pieced him and they let me go. So I said, man, the jobs ain't for me, man. I don't know, man, the jobs ain't for me. So I just, I got it out the streets, man, and kept it in the streets until uh, music, music started opening up for me. And I just started pursuing music after that.
At what point did you start rapping? I started rapping at like, I want to say like 23, 24. I was like, I'm going to say more so 24. 24. That's late. How, how come so late? I was in the streets, bro. <laughs> I wasn't focused. I was. I really wasn't focused on music. I didn't even know I could do music. Like, I, I played around with it in high school. Like, I played around with like harmonizing notes and shit, like trying to sing and stuff. But I didn't know I had the talent because I wasn't focused on that. I was focused on street politics. You feel me? And it wasn't until I got older till, you know, I was um, trying to do some shit with my cousin. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, we need to we need to rap together. And I was like, man, I don't know about that. He was like, man, just try it. So I, I started like experimenting with it and now I'm rapping now. <laughs> rapping and singing, shit. I do both. <laughs> well, that's what it is, man. Yeah, man. Okay, um, yeah, I believe you and Rowdy Rich got some issues going on or had some issues. Is, is he from, uh, from your hood, Park Village Crips? <sighs> Mm. Man, uh, from a business perspective of what people accepted him on, that's what they accepted him on. You know what I'm saying? As a man of experience, as a man of integrity and principle, um, I just don't play like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I don't play to selling a, you know, selling, selling something that's not really authenticated and authentic in what it. And the, and the creation of what it is, meaning like if you didn't grow up in this and you're not doing it from your heart, I'm not going to give you that stamp of approval because my stamp of approval means something. If it didn't mean nothing, I wouldn't have got my face put in a mural in my community. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's no hatred. It's just facts over feelings. In the word of my, my you know, my boy Spider Luck would say facts over feelings. And it's like, People getting their feelings over the facts, you know, like it was a business move for him. It wasn't it wasn't for him from his heart. So I can't really I can't I can't say that he is. But other cats might say he is, though. You know what I'm saying? Other cats might say he is, but I'm not going I'm not going to put that man under, under my umbrella of of all being authentic and standing on what I stand on. Like his PV don't mean my PV. You get what I'm saying? His park village don't mean my park village. I stand on principles and values. You know, his PV might mean something else because it was business. You feel me? So. Okay. Now you mentioned it's just for business. Did well, that's, actually... that's, that's, that's what I got out of it. You know, other cats, like I said, um, I can't speak on him because he, he, at the end of the day, he's a kid in my eyes who, who took a, he made something into a business and, and monetized it. So from that perspective, it's like, I can't give him that. You know what I'm saying? I can't give you that, bro. When I, when I, you know, as a man, I tried to reach out and tell him like, hey, bro, it's a certain politics. You know, you doing that. You need to holler at real homies to let you know what's really what it is. And, you know, you know, niggas turn diva. Like, I don't got to say that. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like one of them. I'm like, oh, OK. OK. So when cats, you know, when cats ask these questions and be pressing, just make sure you got the right answers, bro. Cause my words are authenticated. My ain't no fabrication in mine. And you know, niggas know what it is. So, you know, best of luck to that kid. You feel me? Okay, I, I see in the headline that Roddy Rich told you he doesn't want to be a gang member anymore. Yeah, this is this is this was around the time he did the whole quote unquote put on. You know, there's a um Shout out to Rockstar 2800. You know, um, I was in the room on Clubhouse and um, I was basically giving my my spread on what actually happened. And um, this was around the time he chose to, quote unquote, make his business decision and be from the community. And I was telling cats he came to me and was like, I really don't want to do this because at the time he was making music. One of the labels he was reaching out to was like, yo, music not really. It ain't really it. You gonna need like some kind of hood background, some kind of you know some hood verification. And bro was like, I don't really want to do this. I just want to be a rapper. I just want to just do music. And I said, I respect you for that, youngster. I respect you if you just want to do music. You should just focus on music and not no hood. Don't mention the hood. None of that. If we fuck with you, we fuck with you because we genuinely do. 
but don't do it because you need a background. And then when you get on, you leave real cats in the, in the background. You get what I'm saying? So he came and told me that he told me and another individual and we both was like, well, bro, you ain't got to do that, man. I looked up, bro, caught it like a three second and it was over with. And somebody said, oh yeah, he made a good business move. And I'm like, what? Huh? Wait, so, so wait, you're talking about his put on? It was real quick. I ain't never heard of a put on being three seconds. I, but he, he said some slick shit like he knocked three dudes out. The dudes he talking about, he knocked out. I talk to these dudes every day. I every stand up young men. I'm talking about these young men. They're doing something with their lives. They ain't asking him and depending on him for nothing. But you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna slander them and say, oh, you knocked three dudes out because. Who was the third imaginary dude you knocked out? Who was the first two imaginary dudes you knocked out? I'm just stating the facts. You know what I'm saying? And because what you saying ain't factual, it's like, come on, bro, you starting to look like a clownathan, bro. You looking like a real clownathan right now, bro. And we don't play with clownathans, bro. Like, we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to my young boy, my, my young boy, Rail. You feel me? You know, it's just... Come on, man. We got to do better, bro. We got to do better. Got to do better, man. Now, I, when I did a little research, I could see that there was like a situation where like he tried to jump you guys or he tried to have his goons jump you or something. Nah, I'm going to just keep it all the way a buck. You know, the family that he attached himself to got in their feelings over a situation because he chose to attach himself to some individuals that did some foul stuff to my one of my homeboys from the community who was re, who's right now incarcerated for 22 years to life. And he's an innocent man. His name is Freddie Sanders, Cam. His name is Freddie Sanders. This man is innocent. And people basically orchestrated a lie with the help of the police department to put this innocent brother in jail. Now, no shade to anybody who was in jail facing time who allegedly committed a crime and they want to come home. Yes, we want our family to come home if they are rehabilitated, if the system has done the justice to help them. But it's a difference, Cam, when you got a man sitting in jail who's actually innocent and have witnesses willing to come forward to say, hey, he didn't do this. But then you got people getting paid out money and the police getting involved, corroborating with them, twisting up the narratives of the story to place an innocent man at a crime he had no knowledge of. And because the family knows that I know the truth now about it, they tried to press me and they didn't do a good job about it. You know, I fired on a nigga. He ran fired on another nigga. He thought about it, fired on another nigga. He thought about it. So then when they try to get the opportunity to take me down to the ground, that didn't work. So I end up walking away with a bit finger, dude, bit my finger. Like, so you willing to, you willing to try to politic on a lie versus the truth? You got the bag now. So it's okay for you to have a bag and hide some foul shit that your bloodline doing. And we can actually bring an innocent man home. And then people get in their feelings and be like, oh, this is this is hood affairs. Ain't no hood affairs when it's public records. And can't nobody tell me I can't speak on it because if I can't, I wouldn't be speaking on it now. You get what I'm saying? Like I speak on stuff because I've been through this. I shed tears for this. I lost blood. I lost my blood friends for this. Incarcerated behind this. Told on behind this. Shot at behind this. So you can't tell me I can't speak on something because you don't want nobody to know your skeletons in the closet. You know what I'm saying? And then I go to the hood and I'm telling niggas like, so this is this what we on? We OK with the sucker shit and the buster shit versus standing on what's right. This man is innocent. I said, nah, bro, I can't I cannot fake kick it with nobody. That's like, oh, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm gonna hit you with this, Cam. Somebody I've, I've heard like you know, whispers, because they never said it to me direct because those are cowards. But I've heard whispers. People say like, why is Yael even speaking up on this? This happened before he was even from the community. And I had to tell him this. I said, listen, 
I was voluntarily participating in shit with other communities. And I don't know why we beefing with them, but my presence is voluntarily. So you mean to tell me it's okay for me to go beef with some cats and I don't even know what the significance is the beef is, but I can't speak on a homie and we know what the foul shit is? You got me fucked all the way up, bro. And that's a no-no. We don't, I don't even play them type of games, bro. Like, and these cats know me. They know what type of dude I am, bro. Like, I don't have no tattoos, Cam. Like, I don't have no tattoos. I'm not into, like, and I don't knock nobody who got them, but when a cat, you know, back in the day would ask me, like, hey, bro, where you from? I'm like, bro, my, I'm from Park Village. Now you ain't got to ask me. It's in me. This, this is in my DNA. This who I am. My politics is not just about no, oh, you a blood, you a crip, you a crip, you a, I don't give a fuck about that shit no more. You know why? Because a lot of that shit, them politics is bump. And this man, Freddie Sanders, this not bump. This man is missing out on, on family gatherings, seeing his kids grow up, seeing his daughters take care of his grandchildren. You mean to tell me this man can't come home because you want to keep $80,000 in your pocket? Come on, bro. That's foul. And because Roddy chose to attach himself to people and we asking people to do what's right, like the clubhouse interview, I was so caught up in my emotions because, yeah, I was upset. I have a right to be upset. I got a right to be angry. I have a right to say you foul. I have a right to say do what's right. But because people want the popular vote and people want to hang out with the popular crowd, it's like, oh, don't say nothing. Uh, be neutral. I can't be neutral. You know why? Because if it was you, Cam, you would want somebody talking for you. You would want somebody saying this is an injustice for you. If it was me, I would want somebody speaking for me. And it's sad to say it's a brother who didn't have nothing to do. And, and, and it was over a fight. He beat somebody up for snitching. And then a, a family member got involved and was like, well, because you beat up my son, I'm going to make sure you go to jail. That was premeditated. You premeditated, had hatred in your heart. I just I just can't get I can't, after knowing the whole story, I cannot I can't be I can't I cannot kick it with individuals with with such of a weak mentality. I can't do it. I won't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, I apologize, bro. If I took too long. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good, man. Um, well, that's an unfortunate situation, man. Yeah, you know, man. Uh, and, you know, Free dude. we all trying in our power, man, like, you know, we trying to we trying to get people to do the right thing, man. Like just thinking about me, it hurts, man. Just it, it hurt because if it was me, I would want somebody speaking for me. You know what I'm saying? And if, if people feel like it's wrong for that man to be there, you know, just do what's right to help him come home. You know what I'm saying? Because I talk to this man every day and it hurts me listening to his voice. It hurts me knowing that, you know. I don't got the finances to help him and I really want to help him, but I can't like I, 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 I got other shit. I'm fighting for my own kid. But at the same time, this is my brother. So what if I haven't physically connected with you? You from my community and you stand for something that I stand on. And it's just it is it, it, hurting, man. Every time I think about it, every time I talk about it, bro. It, it hurt more than anything, bro. It hurt more than anything. And, and nobody want to shed light on my bro. So I just like I told him, I said, man, you stay strong and I'll try to stay strong with you. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for, you know, to bring my brother home. You know, definitely, man. Well, free him, man. You know, hopefully. Things will work out for him in the uh, near sure. future, man. For sure. Let's let's talk about your music a little bit, man. Oh, for you sure, know. man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I'm an artist, uh, R and B, rap. I've wrote a lot of records. Um, recently wrote with uh Joe Moses. Shout out to Joe Moses, shout out to Coyote for Hire, uh uh two Hispanics out of Hearthorn. Joe Moses is a blood out of LA. We came together um just to bring communities together. The song is section. Um, it's my record, dope record. Getting ready to drop, uh, I want to say probably the second week of March. Um, shout out to Chuck Dizzle from 92.3 uh, B slash Homegrown Radio. He co-signed the record. Bro said the record is an anthem. It's probably going to be a real big West Coast anthem. And um, 
I got that going on. I was just on a, a, a hit record with Wally the Sensei that I mentioned earlier, featuring Mar. I co-wrote that record. Um, had great help on that record with um, Vic and the District Music Group Studios with Stead on the Beats. Like, I got some real great producers, real great artists that I've worked with. Uh, got Section getting ready to drop. Got an EP getting ready to drop right after that. So I've been working, man. I've been working. Oh, uh, BDG Management. His name is Eddie. Does great work, man. Shout out to shout out to that bro. Shout out to him too, man. He's a man. He does great work, also. Well, that's what it is, man. You know, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Now, I, man, I, I highly appreciate you. Appreciate Lupe Rockstar for even you know bringing me down here. Appreciate you for having the time to share this story and. Um, Hopefully, man, we can work soon, man. We can work again soon. Definitely, man. Sounds good. For I sure. like it, man. All right, bro. All Take right, care, salute, man. man. All right, bro. Why? What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.